this lecture, let's trace the GPIO signals using USB logic analyzer. So USB logic analyzer is a very handy and low cost uh, device by using which you can trace the microcontroller pins activities. It will be very helpful for us when we deal with more complex projects like projects involving serial communications or parallel communications. So this device will be very helpful to trace the pins activities or trace and decode the packets of the serial communication interfaces such as uh, SPI or I2C or CAN etc. Now in this example we will use this USB logic analyzer hardware to trace the activities of the onboard LEDs which are connected to the GPIO pins of the microcontroller. So for this you need to have this uh, USB logic analyzer hardware. There are many different logic analyzer hardware are available in the market. You just buy as per your budget. And this USB logic analyzer comes with a USB cable. You have to connect this USB end to the computer so that computer can collect the samples which are coming out of this USB logic analyzer. And this USB logic analyzer has eight channels as you can see here. The pins is not visible from this picture but there are pins. Totally eight pins are there. That means at a time you can uh, capture activities of uh, eight microcontroller pins. And uh, that is ground and clock pins. Here in this example we are going to take the first channel CH1 and you connect that to this P1 header. So this is the P1 header of the nano board and you connect that to third pin of the P1 header. This is the first pin, second pin and the third pin which is actually LED1. The exact microcontroller pin is PA1. So by using this channel we can trace the activity of the GPIO pin PA1 which is connected to the LED1. And ground connection is very important. So connect ground pin of this logic analyzer to ground pin on the board. So the ground point you can get in header connector PA1's 10th pin. So once you do this connection and make sure that the code is running on the target board, it must be powered and code must be running so that we can capture the LED activity. Now you need to install USB logic analyzer software and we'll be using Sigrox uh, PulseView software in this uh, video. So this is an open source uh, visualizer and uh, you can visualize the activity of the microcontroller pins. So to download this software you visit this website of Sigrox and uh, I am right here in the download page. You just download as per your machine. Mine is Windows and I'll be downloading PulseView 64 bit. So once you install that software, just launch the PulseView. As you can see here, it just shows a demo device. Basically, the no device is connected to my computer right now. So let me connect the USB logic analyzer hardware to my computer. I'm connecting that. Let's see whether it detects or not, whether the software detects or not. I just connected the USB logic analyzer hardware to my laptop and as you can see it is still showing demo device. What I can do now is I'll just click on this demo device and it is asking me to choose the driver. So you just select FX2 ALA firmware generic driver and once I do that and just click on this scan for devices and it will show you this device name. That means this software is uh, detected my hardware but this may not be the case for you because you may not see anything here so if you don't see anything here then that means the driver for that device is missing on your computer so what you do is you just cancel this and close the software then you go to the search bar and type pulse view zadig pulse view just launch this application once this window opens here you may see unknown device. Since I have already installed the driver, it is not showing me anything here. Basically, I can here go to list all devices and then if I select this one, so it actually now showing me the device which is uh, connected. I mean, 
so the details of the usb logic analyzer hardware which is connected to my pc since i already installed the driver so the option is reinstall driver for you it may be unknown device here don't worry at all if you don't see this option for you it may be unknown device and there could be some usb vendor id and product id just click on install driver let me just click reinstall driver in my case now it is installing the driver please wait until it says driver installed successfully let me close this and let me close this as well let me relaunch my pulse view software and now as you can see it is showing the exact logic analyzer hardware name so it could be different for you now you can click on that and uh, here you can uh, select fx2 la firmware generic driver so here you can select generic driver for fx2 based la's and if you just click the scan for devices if you just scan for devices uh, it will show you the device so if you don't see this even after installing the driver so please disconnect and reconnect the usb logic analyzer hardware or you try reinstalling the driver using zadig pulse view application now the software is connected to the usb logic analyzer hardware and now let me make these connections so that i can trace the gpios now i just connected the usb logic analyzers uh, channel to the onboard led pin and now let me just click on session one so if you don't see any sessions you can just click on this now it is saying again no device so let me select the device which is this one then let's configure the number of samples so i'll just keep this for 1 million samples and the sampling rate for a time being you can keep 20 kilohertz no problem for this application and then click on run now as you can see i am seeing the gpio activity on channel 1 this software is saying d0 let's stop this this is how the led is toggling we are making it high and low and now we configured in our software that the LED must toggle for every 500 milliseconds. Now let's make sure that our timer is indeed issuing interrupts for every 500 milliseconds. That we can measure by using this uh, cursors. Let's take the cursors and let me just keep one cursor here and another cursor here. As you can see now, the time gap between these two cursors is around 500 milliseconds, almost equal to 500 milliseconds. So there is some error factor. It is not showing exactly 500 milliseconds. I mean, you can even try with, let's see. It's showing approximately 500 milliseconds. There's a error of around uh, 0.25 milliseconds. That's okay. It could be a error factor introduced by the way we collect the samples and uh, maybe because of the software so we just confirmed using the logic analyzer hardware that our leds are indeed toggling at the rate of 500 milliseconds